Hi, this video uh, wraps up the lecture about plant hormones and gives you some information that will help you complete the objectives. So when we finished in lecture, we were talking about gravitropic response, so bending in response to gravity. And we talked about what happens in the shoot, but you can see here in this picture that the root is also going to bend uh, in response to gravity. All right, so just to review the shoot here, uh, what causes the shoot to bend is that you have high levels of the hormone auxin in the lower part of the stem, and that causes those cells to elongate faster, and as a result, the plant bends uh, up like this. So here's a plant after reorienting towards gravity. Now in the root, uh, there is also a redistribution of auxin. We get high auxin, again, in the low part of the root, but interestingly, that has the opposite effect on the cells, and so uh, the cells on the bottom elongate more slowly. All right, so to summarize, in the shoot, auxin promotes elongation. All right, so the more auxin you have, the faster it elongates. Whereas in the root, auxin has the opposite effect. It inhibits elongation. And so this is something you just have to get used to when thinking about plant hormones, that the same hormone could have two different effects in two different cell types. So here in the shoot, it promotes elongation, and in the root, it inhibits elongation. But that produces the bending that we see when a plant reorients towards gravity. All right, so here's a table to summarize some of the things we talked about. So auxin has this uh, uh, functions in uh, phototropism and also gravitropism. So uh, something that we haven't talked about yet is auxin's role in uh, apical dominance, and this is something that you will explore more in lab through experiments. The other thing that auxin does is that it has the ability to promote cell division in the root. So it's going to uh, go into root cells and cause them to undergo mitosis. All right. Now, it does so in conjunction with another hormone called cytokinin. So here's a little table to introduce this. So uh, auxin is made in the shoot apical meristem. So the shoot apical meristem cells are producing auxin, and then it travels down the plant, and um, oh yeah, then we have this other hormone called cytokinin, and it is produced in the root apical meristem. So now the auxin promotes cell division in the root, where the cytokinin promotes cell division in the shoot. So let's think about why this makes sense here. So here's a plant. There's the above ground part with the shoot apical meristem, and then here's the below ground part, the root, uh, with the root apical meristem. So auxin is going to be made up here in the top of the plant uh, near the shoot apical meristem, and then it travels down, and it promotes the growth down in the root. Now cytokinin has the opposite profile, where it is produced in the root, and it goes up the plant and per, uh, initiates cell division in the shoot. And the interplay between these two hormones uh, helps to coordinate the growth of the plant. So here's some experiments we can do in a laboratory by manipulating these, uh, these hormones and see what they do. We can start with a little bunch of plant cells, and in this case we put them on a media that has uh, very low levels of cytokinin and also low levels of oxygen, auxin, and what we get is very little growth. Now here's, if we put those same cells in an environment where they have lots of auxin and low cytokinin, then what we see is that they develop into roots, so auxin promotes the formation of roots. A bunch of cells that are in high cytokinin are going to turn into leaves, and they turn green and develop chloroplasts, and they become photosynthetic, so cytokinin promotes development of leaves. Now what happens if you mix them both together, high auxin and high cytokinin? Well, what you get is a lump of plant tissue called a callus, and what this callus basically is is a bunch of undifferentiated cells. So you get a lot of cell division, mitosis is happening, but those cells aren't developing into any particular type of tissue. You just get this lump. Here's a, a picture of what this might actually look like um, in the laboratory. So here is some plant cells that have been exposed to either low or high auxin, and also cytokinin levels are going from low to high. And um, the, down in the corner, where both of the hormones are at very high levels, you see these sort of masses of undifferentiated cells, these cali, cali um, where there's lots of cell division going on, but no instructions that help those cells determine whether they are developing into roots or shoots. So to summarize here, Cytokinins, they promote cell division in the shoot. 
Another thing that cytokinins do uh, that relates to something else we've talked about is they inhibit leaf senescence. Remember, leaf senescence is a recycling program that breaks down uh, structures in leaves and exports the nutrients out. We can also think of them as, have, as promoting photosynthesis. These two are sort of two ways of saying the same thing. Here's a cool uh, parasitic uh, insect. So these little blobs on the back of the plant are where insect larvae are developing. Their eggs were laid on the leaves and they grow into these little uh, bumps off the back of the leaf. What's kind of cool, if we flip the leaf over, is we see that most of the leaf is yellow and undergoing senescence. But the larvae actually secrete a chemical that's very similar to cytokinins. And uh, so they're essentially making cytokinins. They release it into the plant. And that little region around that parasitic larva stays green and photosynthetic. And that makes sugars that the bug can use as it develops. So this is an example of a, of a plant uh, hormone being used by an insect.